Hello everyone, my name is Ashfaq Ahmed and I work in the field of structural biology and bioinformatics. Today I want to cover this uh, video about the comparison of molecular docking programs. I received a lot of questions in the comment section and people are asking me which program is better for docking which program is better in accuracy, which program is better in speed, and so on. So I thought, why not to make a comparison of all the available program. I may not cover all the available programs, but I will cover the, the most important one which are being used nowadays uh, in the research field. So it will give you a, a quick introduction or a comparison uh, and you can use this video before going into a docking process and it will help you like which uh, program should you use or which one is out of bound for you. Okay, so let's start. In today's videos, the headlines will be the information about different docking packages, its pros and cons, its pricing, its usage, and much more things. Okay, first of all, I made this table for you, and the table explains the program name, the accuracy, the speed, the flexibility, the cost, ease of use, and the scoring function. Okay. Uh, I'm sure for all of you, these, th this part will be easy to understand, but the scoring function will be a bit difficult to absorb or to swallow. So that's why in next few slides, uh, I will discuss these things and will give you an idea like what does the scoring function means. So let's start. Uh, we have Autodoc, we will cover in this video Autodoc, Vina, Glide, Gold, Dog, Flex, Surfix, Dog, uh, Surflex, Dog, R Dog, and Head Dog. As per accuracy, the Glide and Gold are considered high accuracy, including the Surflex, Dog, plus Head Dog. But the others, like Vina, is a medium, Dog, medium, flex medium or dog medium but if you compare the accuracy with the speed so vena is medium but with is a faster one glide is uh, the accuracy is higher but it's a slower one gold is kind of medium uh, speed and flex is again faster one okay now this is important and you should understand this uh, if you your docking pocket is flexible okay uh, from flexible are mean that uh, sometimes the docking pockets contain uh, too much loopy regions or it contains loops then uh, you it, it's it's better if you can afford it's better to use a flexible docking in flexi in flexible docking the receptor is considered from the receptor i mean the protein the protein is considered uh, a flexible and it is computationally in, uh, intensive or computationally expensive i would say and for example this is the the pocket so in rigid in rigid docking for example this is a pocket if you can see my this video uh, okay so if this is the ligand the ligand will come here and it's fixed it the program will check only the different poses this one this one this one this one this one this one and then it will decide which one is the better the best but overall the the protein or the receptor is considered rigid okay but in other words or some other programs like uh, glide okay no uh, okay uh, yes the glide and gold the flexibility is on the higher side so if the active pocket you you are dealing is flexible or it contains too many loops loops region loops regions are not important but uh, in general terms 
loopy region is more flexible compared to the alpha helices and beta sheets okay so the other program like glide and gold it consider it 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 consider this pocket like this one this one this one this one this one and then the same way they they they, they search for the best pose of this ligand that's why these programs are a bit on the slower side because it is computationally intensive or com computationally expensive so this uh, from this column you can read which program can deal the flexibility and which cannot okay uh, based on the cost prices the glide and gold are not even uh, if even if you are an academic user you have to pay something and even the flex is paired one the surflex can be both and the vena dog r dog and head dog are free for academic use now some of the user will also want the program which is easy to use so from this column you can consider like uh, autodoc vena is the easiest to use i i, I have also uh, i had covered the video of autodoc vena you can find it on the channel okay glide and gold are a bit moderate level dog is a bit harder to use okay and why it is harder so because i'm not covering in the individual program so i will not go in the details and flex uh, uh, they are moderate and again our dog is harder and a head dog is moderate so in this list autodoquina is the easiest to use scoring functions are um, for some there you will see empirical for some you will see knowledge base for some you will see uh, data driven and hybrid so in the next few slides we will cover these three term terminologies what is empirical what is knowledge based and what is uh, data driven i would say okay what are empirical empirical scoring functions and if the program calculates the binding energy i would say or the the, the score you you receive at the end of the docking so if the program calculates that score based on the physical and chemical principles what it means physical and chemical principles just like the number of wonder wall forces the number of hydrogen bonding the number of electrostatic interactions in simple terms the more are these interactions the higher are these interactions you can expect a better pose with a higher energy the higher energy means the minus high value like minus 10 minus 7 minus 9 okay and simply they calculate the score like delta g bind with h bond plus van der waal plus electrostatic electrostatic interactions and many others okay so vena is typically uh calculating the binding energy based on the emp empirical scoring functions now you got an idea what is actually empirical scoring functions okay the second one is knowledge based or statistical potential uh, potential scoring functions what are they so they these programs actually gives you the final energy calculated based on the statistical analysis what are state or how the knowledge based scoring function are working this is important for you to understand for example you are dealing a receptor which has too many structure present in the pdb on the other hand i'm dealing a receptor and there is no structure of that protein in the pdb when i'm using the term protein so actually i i i mean a protein from the whole family for example you are dealing with metallo beta lactamases or ndm1 so maybe you are dealing 
betalo metallo beta lactamase or ndm1 from the e coli but suppose the pdb contains structure from the staphylococcus aureus uh, strep strep streptococcus pneumoniae and there is no structure from e coli let's suppose in that case you will think that uh, okay uh, here is a problem the pdb do not contain the structure of my protein from e coli but actually the pdb contains other structure from the same family because metallo beta lactamases uh, doesn't matter if they are from e coli or if they're they are from staphylococcus aureus or if they are from pneumonia or from klebsiella they are metallo beta lactamases and that that doesn't mean so in in that case uh it contains the pdb contain the structures from other homologs or from the family member so that's okay so coming back to this point if the pdb contains structures from the family of your receptor then it means the knowledge based programs has some advantage over the empirical scoring function because the knowledge based programs are trained on those data present in the pdb they are trained and they, they can decide better like the that which what kind of uh, drug or what kind of drug containing certain types of functional groups will be best in this active pocket because the program is trained on those data present in the pdb but what if your uh, protein has no data in the pdb in that case doesn't matter if you buy a, a very unique program um, and you you spend some bucks some dollars and you are happy that now this program has a better accuracy but if the pdb do not has the data then in that case the empirical one is the best because it can decide empirically on based on the physical and chemical principle so the knowledge based programs are better only if the pdb or some other database but mostly the pdb if that contains that data okay data driven or machine learning uh, scoring function so some of the programs they 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 have diff they are using different machine learning models just like say gradient boosting linear regression random forest i talked about these models in certain other videos so those models are trained on the protein ligand complexes present in the pdb or somewhere else but uh, those models are trained so in that case and and the, those models know the patterns of connectivity so there are uh, a, a, a smaller chances of uh, to get a false a, a false positive result so in that case if there is a smaller chance to get a false uh, positive result that means the accuracy is on the higher side so now it will be easy for you uh, if you have the money you have the option to use glide gold and also flex but you have also the option to use the uh, free ones and the other the, the these other programs which one to choose so best just look for the scoring function of those programs also look into the pdb which pro which protein you are dealing so that is another thing okay now in my view knowledge base is normally uh, ideal for targets with abundant structural data i i told you why because uh, already uh, in the previous slide data driven is based for large scale virtual screening a target with limited prior data let's say at the time of covid 19 early in the pandemic but wait for this slide the last one what you normally consider or what a user normally consider so a user normally consider a program which is easy to use which is free or paid depending on the lab where he or she is working also the user 
consider uh, does pdb contain a lot of structure of your protein you need to consider from now does the pocket is flexible if you don't know just find out is it contain many loopy regions or not uh, okay do i need to screen a larger library or a few compound this is an important question so for example if you ask me that uh, i have the choice i i have the choice to use autodocrina and i have also the choice to use glide let's say this is your question now which one i should use and my first question from you will be how many compounds you have let's say you are saying 1 million compounds i need to screen my answer will be autodocrina because you also need faster program to screen 1 million of course glide is the better or glide is the best but that is also sl on the slower side okay now you may ask me again that okay if i use autodocrina then what about this accuracy of course um this is a kind of probability that you you limit yourself to uh, some lower accuracy but we have the answer now and the answer is once you get the best options or the best binders then you can validate them by using alpha fold 3 board 1 or chi 1 that's it okay now what are the take home for you if you are working with a budget limited project i would suggest use autodocrina or rdoc if you are working in industry or you have the money then of course go for glide and gold if you are searching for protein flexibility and you have the money of course go for glide and gold but just remember that they are uh, a bit on the slower side so also keep in mind how much is your library of compound okay and if you are uh, the same thing if you are screening a larger data set then doc or auto doc vena because they, they 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 will give you a better speed and in case of protein protein complexes i also covered some but uh, here um, the best is head doc and you can use it but for protein protein complex again uh, i would suggest you to use alpha four boards or chi one that's it i hope you like this video uh, it was a bit kind of information but um, information on a different angle on a different level okay uh, thank you so much if you have any question please drop your question in the comment section and uh, stay tuned for more uh, better videos and if you have any suggestions you can drop me in the comment box i don't mind your suggestion by the way okay thank you bye bye